stock. Wells Fargo stock is up 2% today despite the announcement that the bank will have to pay a $1 billion fine for mortgage and auto loan abuses. You know, things like that, quickly before we discuss this further about why the stock is up on this news. Firstly, they pointed to this in the earnings release, so it was slightly priced in. But if we go back a little bit further, when the Fed surprised everyone with that unprecedented and quite delayed punishment uh, on them not being able to grow their assets, I think the big fear that was out there was, will this spark the others into further action? The Fed has made a big late statement will it spark the likes of the OCC and CFPB to take more action indeed it has but that action hasn't been worse than people expected and I think that's why you see the stock up now 2% because people think okay now what else what other punishments are there left that could be placed on them there's not much else so is this one billion dollars was less than expected I think it's the fact that it's now confirmed and it's behind them done. the Got OCC's it. done a lot the CFPB's done a lot the Fed's done a lot what else can their punishments be and I think that's why you see uh, the stock up either way let's discuss further Andrew Stoltman's with us Securities attorney and shareholder advocate. Also, Chris Whalen, chairman of Whalen Global Advisors. Uh, thanks very much uh, to both of you for joining us. Andrew, I'll start with you, if I may. Is this punishment enough, or should there and could there be more? No, I don't think it's enough. I mean, if you look at the firm, they had a $22.5 billion net income last year. They get a $1 billion fine. I mean, that's about 2 2.5%. It's extraordinarily serious what Wells Fargo engaged in. And I'm not anti-Wells Fargo, but the executives and the board of directors were responsible for this. And I don't think the, the actual fine fits the crime. And make no mistake about it, it is a crime. And I think to the extent you don't have senior executives going to prison, I think you're going to continue to see these sorts of abuses going forward. Remember, this is post 2008 when supposedly the parade of horribles were over but wells fargo engaged in extraordinarily serious conduct and it's paying a fine and it's the shareholders who get left holding the bag andrew 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 always so predictable chris whalen isn't it the shareholder just pays this bill uh yes the shareholders are the victims here your colleague is correct uh the officers and directors generally skate because the regulators don't like sanctioning officers and directors but you know the, the officers and directors are responsible and when they're sloppy and stupid Andrew and wants they, them going to prison, Chris. Things, should they go to prison? They should be punished. Should they go to prison? Yeah, they should, should go, they go to, to prison. prison. You yeah. will prevent these abuses. No, and I if want you Chris want to, to this answer the, the question. I know what you think, Andrew. Hold on one second and I'm going to get you in here. Don't you worry about it. Chris, should they go to yes. prison? Uh, wow, in some okay, cases, yes. Both. Yes, and I'm t and you know me, I'm very, very e easy when I come to criticizing the economic returns of the big banks, and they do this all the time. They have one-time extraordinary losses that occur every once in a while, and that's why the returns are inferior. But Wells historically has had stellar returns, and I think you know for investors, yes, the worst is over. You look at this at 1.4 times book discount to JP, and it's like duh. You know, as I said to Linda before the show, tell Jimmy Kramer to back up the Cayenne and we're going to take some stock certificates <laughs> home this weekend, okay? Right. Andrew, you feel better that he agrees with you? I mean, it's hardly a debate if you both think they should go to prison. Somebody finally agrees with me, Michelle. That's a good day. And now all I have to do is get you to agree with me and I'll, I can die well, a look, happy man. Well, Wells made mistakes. I think they're going to address it. You know, we've gone through the passion play that the regulators put on every time this happens. We have hearings. We have... The, you know, public flagellation. Uh, let's move forward. Uh, big banks have operational risk issues that they cannot manage. They're too big. And the Fed did this. The Fed is responsible for this, and they don't know what to do. Because if another bank gets in trouble, they're not going to be able to slam them together. They can't do that anymore. So the Fed may actually yes. have to deal with these situations proactively in the future. Andrew, closing comment? Yeah, look, I just think there's still a lot of people that think right now the markets are rigged. And post-2008, I think you really have to come down tough on banks, and specifically the executives, because you don't want the shareholders left holding the freight. And I just don't think this sort of activity has the prophylactic deterrent impact we have no. so we don't remain in the Groundhog Day movie. Gents, no. we're going to leave it there. Thank you both uh, for joining us, Andrew Stoltman and Chris Whalen. Thank Wayland, you. And, uh, have a great weekend. Remarks, Michelle.